Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Rockin' Beards Podcast, episode 34. It's your boy, HSR. Yo, what's up? This is Sid Chrome. No, no, that's funny. I, I don't even know if he watches this. Anyway, so we're back, and uh, we went through the new albums, because that's how we picked them, so in case anybody's wondering how we landed on this act, uh, they released an album on Friday, and it's Saturday, and we review the albums based off of what came out on Friday. Mm-hmm. Now you understand the logic of this show. Deep and, process. Uh, Guar released uh, their new album, The Blood of Gods, which is the first album since the passing of the last guy, Odorous. Odorous, real name Dave Brocky. That dude. Um, on that note, I'm going to just say this is literally the first time I've listened to Guar. I've never in my life, never heard anything from them before. Not a song, not a, th- I knew what they were cause their costumes are distinct enough that when you see a picture, you remember what Guar looks like kind of like, you know, that it's them. And then this album came and I listened to this and then I read up a bunch on them. So I didn't sound overly stupid on this uh, review. That's right. I listened to you, YouTube commenters. He's like, you guys should do some more research because you sound pretty dumb. So I did. You're right. We should. Boom. That's right. We knew about the cover this time. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's right. We're just owning our shit. So is that that's where that was your first uh, exposure to Guar was this? Yeah. That's t- it. To the chagrin of my friend who was like, I've been trying to get you to listen to them for years. And I'm like, yeah, well, shit happens. Now I did. Guar is awesome. And I say that now, like, I really enjoyed my experience, spoilers and whatnot, but I already want to go back. Spoilers. I want this to go back. This isn't a TV show. I don't care. Yo, this, this is music, just by the way. There's some metal on it. So if you if you weren't, we just spoiled something for you, we're sorry. Yeah, and, um, well, my opinion could have been revealed later on at, at this point. Yeah, you can skip ahead if you don't really give a shit about this drivel in the descriptions. And Timestamps. We, ap- we, approach, we appreciate you, not approach. We appreciate you all watching this, and thank you, and uh, loves and stuff. Guar is dope is what I discovered, and I already can't wait to go check out their older albums. So if y'all could just tell me and help me save some time. What is the best next Guar album to jump on? Um, should I go chronologically through this? I don't even know how to approach this. Where is good resources for Guar lore? Fans hook a brother up. Sid, tell us about your Guar life. So, hashtag Guar life. Uh, I was introduced to Guar by the music video for Gore Gore. I don't remember when. At some point in high school. It's a ridiculous fucking video. If you've ever seen it, it's it's their manager with the big hair. I don't remember his name. He's one he's one of their characters. He's been around forever. Uh-huh. Uh, he's like, and then I think it's Odorous is like, it's time to challenge Gorgor's mastery of Earth. And then it's a big war song, and it looks like Power Rangers, and it's epic, and it's ridiculous, and Guar. And um, I've never seen them live, but like I've been in and around the metal community enough that I know that their live show is ridiculous, and I know that it's 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 on my bucket list. Honestly, um, it's now on my bucket list too, and you should check Sid out at the bucket list. Yeah, check out Bucket List and That's the right. Sydney Channel where I ramble about shit. In the link below. In the link below. As well um, as a link to some fun mythos of the Guar characters, because as you brought up, the manager guys on this page, and you can read all their names in a quick little bio. Thank you, Guar, for the creative campaigns. Those also, there's nice. some videos where we talk about uh, Seth MacFarlane starring in Star Trek. Star yeah, Trek that, that, that'll Seth appear McFarlane. in the corner here. Okay. There. There? Sure. Whatever. There. They'll okay. see it. Um, so, uh, Blood of the Gods album cover is just well, some it, epic j- shit. Just before, oh. just before we do that, I think we, we should quickly break down who Guar is and As you may see, a mouse has appeared in my hand as we scroll through the the page. There is the Berserker Blothar, who is the new front man of the band, replacing it. And you get some fun facts about him. I honestly recommend you check out this link. I did it as I was like checking the album out, and it really enhanced my view, my listening experience to just see the characters and understand a little bit. I don't know, it's fun. They're pretty ridiculous. And then there's Balsack, the Jaws of Death. Balsack. Uh, Balsack. Oh, I get it. And he plays guitar. He has a fun thing on his head and whatnot. Um, 
Beefcake, the Mighty, is the the bassist, and like these are like fully defined characters, like something like t- more than twenty years of fucking history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind like them, they man. they have a narrative that's been going for a very long time. And like apparently it's like consistent as the stories go throughout the album. Shit happens, and like it's it's really a whole universe. Yeah. And then there's Jismac Degusha, and he is the drummer. I, if I'm not- hobbies, clubbing, barbecue, cleavage, pretending. Yeah, buddy, and um. Then there's Postulus Maximus, who is a guitarist. I think he he's relatively new. I mean, the last album mentions Maximus. I'm just assuming. I here. don't think there are any uh, founding members left in this band. Yes, I read that tidbit as well. Then there's the bodyguard Bone Snapper, and he um, is apparently a jokester character. Or no, he looks um. He looks like a lizard man. He looks like something out of like the 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. Yeah. yeah, and I believe he has a little spot on the album we'll get to talk about. Uh, then there's Saborg Destructo, and he gets a little feature on the album because he's not... I guess this is like now we're beyond the uh, oh, actual that. band members. His favorite TV show is Rick yeah. and Morty. And I, w- I was going to actually point that out. But yeah, so it's cool that the fact is that this album consists of people who go beyond the actual band members as contributing it. This, uh, is, this is the manager. This is the guy I was P. talking Martini about. Martini is the manager. Yeah. And then the page kind of ends. So you get like... Like these video game bios of them, anyway. And he's just like this big Elvis mixed with like Don King style hair. So for those who have no idea what a guar is, it's not just ridiculousness for the sake of ridiculousness per se. It's got like a whole thing behind it. Yeah, I know like the impression of what it is, but it was it was not what I was expecting. Is all I can try to say. And then yeah, let's talk about that album cover and the name, the the blood of the gods. It's an epic fucking album cover. And it looks like something out of you know that movie Heavy Metal. Yes. It looks right out of that. Just a guy holding like it's like he, um, a shield and his face is all covered in armor and he's got red eyes and he's like Arr, and he's got a sword and it's like oh there's some other guys too. It's, it's the band. Know. It's like the whole band is there looking epic, ready for battle. It's his guar across the top. As I understand it, the title has to, to do with the fact that the bloods of the gods have been spilled, per se, in the sense of their fallen comrade who, uh, you know, whatever. So we can... We can uh, it's almost like they... So the album is about Odorous. I think that his death is kind of ex- like explored, and I guess we can get into that if you want to talk about the the first track. It might have been what uh, is manifested as the the war on uh, Guar. Is some of that real metal goodness? Um, I was I was just was smacked in the face. It was beautiful. This is this is a very strong start to this album. Um. And it, it kind of, I guess, ties into the death of a dude. Like, one of their guys has fallen. It's the war on Guar, right? It's the war on Guar. And so they kind of just describe how um, the people rising up now and have turned on their gods, Guar. As and you, you really feel like it's it's battle time. like. And they're ready for it. Like, they're responding. Like, you think you can? We'll fucking do what we got to do. Yeah. And the song is, you know what I like about this? It's a seven-minute track, right? Which is... Every time I see that now, it's a warning flag. It goes one of two ways. The artist makes it boring, and about halfway through, or at some point, you look and go, ugh, and it's boring. But you got to keep in mind, when we say seven minutes, like, th- th- this this, this does what a lot of metal tracks do, and, and some bands will separate it into two tracks and some won't. So there's there's the, the classic trope of, like, the, the acoustic intro, uh, very reminiscent of, like, Metallica or King Diamond. Um... A lot, of, a lot of 80s albums did this, and it's and they do it really, really well, and then the boys comes in with, like, something of war, but and I, I makes this declaration. I don't and think it would have worked as two songs, because it really thematically is the same track. It is, but, like, like a lot of bands, like, um, Lamb of God, for example, uh, did it on uh, Wrath, I think. I mean, just, uh, they, just separated, they separated the, the acoustic intro, and it's it's the same song, like, it leads right in, it, if you if you don't... Yeah, I'm cool with how they did it. It's cool, it's cool, I like it. But what I'm saying is, when, when we say it's a seven-minute trap, bear in mind, there, there is an introduction, and then it gets into the song, yeah, which is like... Yeah, but the introduction's like, still like a minute and change, so it's a six-minute track, yeah. which still goes into the long enough character. Anyway, long-ass song, and they managed to make it so varied and so interesting. They slow it down, they speed it up, they add that weird guitar sound at the end. They they do. I've fallen and I can't get up. They do that, which is like a nine one one call to actually end it. Now my grievance is the outro has that really like sounds playing for a while. I Solo? Get, 
No, no, no. After the very end, when it's just like kind of like the fading of the oh, guitars. Oh, like the feedback. For like 40 seconds. And I know everybody does that. Ah, it's, it's metal as fuck. I hate it personally. I, I don't like it. I don't like long rap outros. All of it. It bores me. I'm like, okay, end your song. Oh, fuck. Or whatever. So but it's it's well done because they add that little skit there at the end where he fall in. It, it was cute. And the 911 operator's like, you're an idiot. And whatever. And, uh,. It blew my mind how that how versatile it was, right? Like, keep in mind, I've never listened to this before. And it's seven minutes, and a lot of bands don't have that level of variance in a song like this. Even if it does change, it's like the guitar solo still feels kind of like, no, this is like, it just every eight bars was something completely new, something to shake it up, something to keep it going. And I really I really liked how, how the intro to the solo section was this, like, ripping bass riff. It was really awesome, and then the guitar comes in and the lead, and it doesn't, like, there's no... You know how sometimes metal bands will add rhythm guitar tracks to make it sound crunchier, whereas live it's just kind of the bass holding up the track while while the guitar solos. Like this feels very live because it's just you know this what? bass riff holding up while this guitar the guitar shreds. It's really cool. And I feel like it's almost done in a way to make sure that everybody in the band gets a little bit of an opportunity to have their moment. So it's not like it, you get the feeling right away that Guar is not really about any one person. But yeah. it's like they're like a squat. And it's cool that it gets reflected in the music the way they do. Because a lot of these bands, like, take a Queens of the Stone Age where it's really like main dude and his, his homies, right? Yeah. And this is more like this. There is not, there, I mean, yeah, there's the main vocalist because he's the, but no, but there's not really a main dude. It's just the homies all it's together. More like it's some classic metal. Like if you like some, some King Diamond or like some Merciful Fade or some of that real 80s stuff, like a lot of tremolo picking, some some very thrashy bluesy riffs. Like, it's it's great. I love this track. It's it's a great album opener. I give it a four. I give it a four and a half. Like, I'm going to just say there's going to be the bit of subjectivity that goes, like, I'm not necessarily coming back. Like, this is already, I can see an album that might play out really well to do the whole listen to. But as an individual track to go put on later on, I don't see myself so drawn to this one. But I really enjoyed the experience and the context it says for the album and everything. Like it's it's really cool because it makes you get this feeling. Like they let you know right away that if you are new to Guar, this is part of something more than this album. Like there's a war on Guar and boom, which also might have to do with I guess the reactions to the fans that they're getting in real life in light of their choices of new singers over the last few years and yeah. the struggle it's been to even get to a point where there is a new album, which is something I just considered now that this song might have that parallel meaning to say that they're acknowledging the war that's on Guar right now and their existence as a group and everything. Because it's, it's always weird when, it, when a singer dies or when a singer leaves a band, right? There's always this stigma of like the fans won't let them continue because for them that's like the sound is dead type of thing. And especially for a guy like Odorous who was so vocal, not just when it comes to music, but I mean, the dude was, was a Twitter celebrity, right? Like, he would he would rip on presidents, he would rip on other celebrities, he would rip on other musicians, and it was all in good fun. But he was he was very, very well known for it, and he was the voice of Guar, right? And and now, with him gone, it's kind of like this this defining characteristic of the band has, has been ripped away from them. So this war mm. on Guar is like, Real. yes, but we're going to do this and we're going to come back stronger. And it, it really, like, the song feels very vital, very alive. Like, it has something to prove. It's really cool. It's a really good track. It's a great way to start this album. Agreed. So, yeah, four on five. And then, um, then we move on to Viking Death Machine. It's my Viking Death Machine. I was warned that Guar was not necessarily going to take themselves too seriously all the time, and we get a little bit of that in this song. They, like, okay, they are first and foremost a, a parody, right? Like, they're a parody of, of everything that is shock rock and metal and ridiculous and over the top. At the same time... They're very satirical with they, their social commentary. They are, but they are so metal, and you gotta yeah. love it. Like, what I like about this track is it's the introduction to the new character, the new leader of the squad. I don't remember his name. I should have written it down. Oh, the Blothar the Berserker. Right. And I did write it down. Go hold it. And uh, so it was quoted on an interview that this is the closest thing to like a backstory track anyone's gonna get on the guy. Right. And yeah, so he has a flying death machine that causes like mayhem and it causes like havoc and it kills a whole bunch of people and shit everywhere he goes. Boom, boom, badness. And then it turns out he's in like this race across the the skies with all these other famous Thor like not Thor like fucking Viking like Viking gods Nordic and culture and all that shit. 
and it's really fun and then it just flips like it just like kind of almost gets like a jingle in the middle of the song it turns into this like 70s folk like trippy kind of like it starts off this it it could almost be a motorhead tribute like a really heavy distorted bass track and then this like really fast like thrashy riff comes in and it sounds exactly like something motorhead would have done um yes that's fair. even vocally uh it's very very close it feels like a lemmy tribute it's really cool it's really cool it's it's uh it's very invigorating track and uh he's actually like losing the race at first and he comes from behind and he like wins and then he's like I'm a Viking god. Who raise your hand if you want to fuck me? It's just to like, and you can already picture how like they're working this into their live show. Like you get the feeling now, and because like it is more than just an album, and I believe there's a comic book that got released very recently to accompany it to give me more context to the story as well, and all of that. It's like I can almost picture this. Like in, my head's almost in the frame of a musical as I'm like picturing this. Like these are the songs to fill in the gap of something. Yeah. And it really, I can picture it live as that part plays out and there's the ridiculousness and you can like look at what the dude looks like. You can see him dressed up. He's been performing for a minute now and it's fun. Um, I love the energy on the song and then it flips into crazy solo after that little 70s thing you were describing. And it's not like it's serious in any way, but it makes you be like, this is an epic motherfucker whose badass chariot races across the sky. And like, it gives you the imagery to like, be like, he's cool. And it's very metal, and it's. I was so excited. Like it was really good. I liked it more than the last one. For like me. all the way through this album, you're just like, you know what I mean, just head banging up the irons. Like you can't, you can't not. But at the same time, it's so distinctly different track to track to keep you like engaged. There's points to it all, like right. So we know there's a war on Guar, and blah 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 is happening. And then following that up, we get introduced to the new leader who's gonna help Guar fight back and shit, etc. And so it's really fucking fun. This is a great album. and It's if, really fun. It's really fun music. Four and a half on five for this track for me. I gave the same four and a half. I don't uh, know if you have any more commentary on this one. Let's ask El Presidente. They will die. Fine. So, so ah. I, the, kudos to the bassist. It's really well used. Really well done, prominent. It's amazing. Kudos to the song. It's so cool. It is fucking like they're going to fly in, kill the president, start some mayhem. I imagine they killed Trump at this part of their show, possibly. Probably. Yeah, makes we sense. Watched, we watched a video, a uh, live video, which involved them ripping off Trump's stomach and just kind of watching yeah. him dance. And uh, FBI, leave us alone. We're just we're just quoting Guar. We're just quoting Guar. That's all we're trying to no, say. No, no, no commentary here. Um, we talk about music. And then the it also has the added element of the social destruction that is just happening around it, right? So, like, you have them come in and make very direct things of what they're going to do to the president, but then also it gets a little observational, especially with the chorus, where it's just like... It's just like you're... You, it's like the your society is dying but it's like each member of the band just drops like a one-liner perspective of stuff like you all should fear television and you know you've ignored your neighbor what did you expect and it's like it's like it's it's so ridiculous at the idea because yeah they're going to teleport in and kill the president and whatnot but at the same time they're they're really just making this point but like yeah you put yourself into this position where we have to do this because you've given yourselves no choice you have bad leadership and like it's all very literal uh, there are no metaphors here. It's like in your face speaking about how 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 just generally fucked up everything is, and it's like you still get the sense because the song is just like it's still this like super heavy like like old school metal romp. It's um, to say like I, I could almost picture like a, a nightmare on Elm Street yeah. to like the way the melodies were composed. Whilst, yeah, and I, I I wasn't the biggest fan of the way this riff kicked in. Um, because it felt it felt a little a little basic, but I really really liked the way the song evolved. Uh, uh, like I by did, the end, the chorus is amazing, and by the end of the song, I was totally hooked. Just an extra commentary on your bluntness. I feel like what is makes Guar particularly impressive is that they've allowed themselves to have this format where they can, because they're not people talking to us. They're intergalactic planetary warriors come here to dominate us, and they're just talking to the peasants of this planet <laughs> as they're speaking to us. And right. So it's 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 it's, it's a satirical, that. theatrical pr 
presentation. And it's like with, it, you get the sense it's all in good fun, but at but the same time, like it's like science fiction, right? Yeah. So it's like you can talk about racism directly as long as it's blue and green people. So by creating that element of disillusionment in terms of how it can't be that real, because it's Guar saying it, they can speak some serious truth in just the most direct language. You can. It's amazing. I was really impressed. With the, with the subject matter and the way the song was delivered, but I, there was something a little off in this one in terms of just how it felt. It kind of lost a bit of the energy, so for me, it's a four. I actually, I, I ended up liking this one more than, than the first two. Okay. Uh, and and I, I didn't, again, I didn't feel that way right at the beginning of the song, but it really, the way it grew and the way it evolved and the way it built... Uh, by the end of the song, man, it's got everything. It's 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 even got a string sex section at one point to emphasize some punches. Uh, the riff, while while it starts off really basic, it the way it builds, it just gets really gnarly. Uh, the chorus is this weird twisting little li- little little minor riff. Like it's it's really cool. It got a five for me. It's just as much as I can appreciate the brilliance in the writing, it comes down to style for me. Just just to make it clear, I'm not trying to criticize the song like it has like, serious flaws or anything. It's just this is more on par with if I was going through the album, I w- it's a treat. Like the album itself is a treat, but when I'm bumping a playlist later on, I could see myself really liking Viking Death Machine. It's so fun and airy, and I would want to put that on. Whereas El Presidente, it's more of a situational track for me, and that's how I got to the- Anyway, I just wanted to explain that before anyone criticized. Giving a four isn't saying it's bad, it's preference. I'll be your monster. Yeah, you can do that. What are you afraid of, sweetie? So just before we get started, uh, according to Genius.com, so if I'm wrong, that's where I saw it, uh, the manager in the plot of this album at this point has tried to convince Guar, or is in this plot to make them like a boy band of sorts, Mm. and he's convinced them to write like a boy band-esque song, and this is their efforts to write this more romantic love song, so it's like... I'll be your monster, I'll hide under the bed, and I'll eat you, because to them, this is like, you know, the sweetness of Right, right, right. And I appreciate what is happening on this song, because it's silly, and it's got a cute energy to it, and it's almost making fun of how cheesy a lot of these other songs are by just adding the little guar elements to show that it's really so formulaic. Anyone can write this shit. Anyone can make this track, etc. That's what I kind of got from it. Okay. But at the same time, I didn't like it as much because it really just, it was, this was the first one where I was like, I hope the album doesn't sound like this after this because the first three were cool and then this one, it, it started to go in a, I didn't like it. And I guess it's it's ironic because as part of the plot album, it is kind of an ironic thing. But still... Not really my favorite track on this album. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't. I the the first three are definitely more invigorating. Um, the this is another track that that feels like it could have been a tribute a little bit to uh specifically to Iron Maiden. The the open the opening riff sounds a lot like Two Minutes to Midnight. Okay. Uh, and then you know the track progresses in a very Maiden esque fashion. Um, doesn't quite reach the heights of what they did on the first like there was some really cool twin guitar parts on the on the first few tracks there was some really cool solo sections really really awesome bass work and this one is still good like it's still it's it's fine yeah it's just not as there like this is more like if you like the sound that they're playing on this like if you're already into it you'll appreciate it a whole bunch like you'll bop your head and you'll raise your and it's not like it's terribly written it's just it's so silly Anyway, I give it a three and a half. I appreciate what it is. I don't really like it that much, but it's not enough to call it bad or anything. It's a good song. I still give it a four. Fair enough. Um, Orox is next. Orox. 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 This is that like municipal waste, fucking suicidal tendencies. That like heavy hardcore thrash shit that you want to listen to because it's gonna get you raging. It it's is. Good also criticizing the social decay of humanity across the board and how shit's kind of hitting the fan for people in so, general. Also that from those other bands. Which is pretty good. Um, I, I didn't get like a super, like it's very blunt, right? So it's not like there's hidden meanings here. It's just like, you know. you're all kind of fucked up now and this is the situation and you know, where it, it sounds like from the perspective of a godlike character observing humanity as though they are a pest on this planet, like an accident or a mistake and shit, and it's or a really virus. 
and it's really cool like it's cool to get that honest like perspective that they're giving but man this song isn't about the lyrics you're, you're so caught up on the energy i know it's rare for me to say that but it just comes in hitting and you just your heads it's not even just regular banging it's like that like, yeah it's heavy. a fu- it's a blast beat it's a fucking thrasher i don't like. actually know any of these bands so forgive me people so for you, I know I know that you guys watching totally get what the fuck he's saying. I'm just sitting here like, yeah, it's hard for those of you like me out there watching. Um, but it's it's crazy. It explodes. It's got it, the energy doesn't die. It is like four and a half minutes of mosh pit mayhem, and it's fucking beautiful. And you know what's cool? Um, like like there's a lot of longer songs on this album, but they don't feel long. Like mm-hmm. they don't feel boring. They don't feel it's because like I have a theory where every four to eight bars, something has to change in a song, right? Like, it doesn't have to change in a drastic way. Some, like, you add an element, you tweak a thingy, and, and that creates this organic, and every like great... Like, the music, the music has to feel alive. It right. has to feel like it's moving. And honestly, every great album we've reviewed in terms of high marks has had that common factor, and they've... Guar is able to take these long and complicated parts where other bands may have just kept like the bass line super consistent or kept the drums consistent and just had a guitar wailing out. Guar makes sure that the entire band is dynamic and alive. Mm-hmm. Every every part of this song is orchestrated to like precision. And in no small part, uh, the rhythm section is awesome. And it's not, and I mean, I, I didn't expect Guar to... To, to fall into this trap, but it and, and I'm glad they didn't. They didn't fall into this modern metal like breakdown every, every after every second chorus and everything has to chug and there's got to be a shit ton of double bass and it's got to be like no this this feels very very classic but, but like very fresh at the same time because the music breathes uh, while it is very technical it's still like the melodies aren't bogged down with this need to be heavy. It's it's heavy because it's heavy. It's not heavy because it's trying to be. And you can feel like it's aggressive. You can yeah. feel that. You can almost feel the sense of panic and despair in the world through the song. And it kind of. I mean, I don't really understand how I'll Be Your Monster fits into fucking anything for this album story. Maybe if I saw it live and I saw the in between parts, it would make more sense. Just a, just a, just a little joke. A little but, joke. But uh-huh. This is great. It, it, could, it shows the decay, especially if the war is happening and they're clearly demolishing shit and they're just watching as, wow, you guys, you guys turned on us. Well, fuck you. Look at your world now. Yeah, and uh, I give it a four though because it really is a wall of sound. It really is amazing. It is what it is, and it's again down to that subjectivity that I'm applying. It's it's flawless for what it is, but what it is is not my favorite. I really yeah. like it when I'm in the. This is going to be come quickly one of the albums I bump when I'm really in a bad mood, to like freaking <laughs> like, but like high on that list. But it's like, I have to be there at this point to listen to a lot of this. That, I, I gave this song a five. I mean, look, I'm, I'm coming from like, <laughs> I grew up on fucking Metallica and Slayer. And, and this isn't quite, like, it's more on, on, the, on the, the punk side of thrash than it is on the metal side of thrash. So again, appreciate. think like Municipal Waste. Think, uh, who did I say, Suicidal Tendencies. Think those really fast riffs and that, that, that really snare-heavy blast beat. Like... You know, you know what I'm saying, but like old, really old school Slayer too. Uh, scratched scratches that itch. So this one got a five for me just because it really captures that energy really, really well. And there's not, there's nothing really wrong with there's it. There's nothing wrong with like it. Like it's, it's pretty. It's my only flaw would be that it has less variance in obvious ways. So you actually have to, like, I'm certain if I listened to this song five or six times and caught all the nuances, I'd appreciate it even more than I do now. But whereas in the other tracks, like the first three at least, it was more obvious the nuances. This one, because of the aggression and the speed, it does take a little bit of an acquired taste to appreciate it. Kind of swarms you. Absolutely. And um, so Guar. The fine folk. Fine folk at the Guar Institution would like us, the fine folk of humanity, to be aware that Due to our excessive fornication, the population is at a point where bad things are happening. And they feel like if we were to refrain from things like fucking or breathing or farting or eating or... I like how breathing is like second on that list. Yeah, you know, Fucking, breathing, farting, eating. Like... <laughs> well, you know, just these, these, ascent, these things. If we could just do a little less of them and there were a little le- less of us, like a lot less of us, then... um. Things would be better for the long-term tenure and duration of our planet. And 
This song is fucking great. I really like this one. I like it a lot more than the last couple of tracks that we've listened to. This is a really, this is a really cool song. Uh, <clears throat> I, I listened to this on on free Spotify, Spotify, um, Stealify, right? Um, Spotify. No, you're and the one so, who gives the mother ad love, so you you pay them. Don't worry. Okay. Um, and I got an ad right before this song. And then the song kicked in, so it, I got kind of like an, int- an intermission. So it felt like it was it was starting back up uh, after like a commercial break. And it was it was really cool the way the the riff kicked in after that kind of like little fuzzy intro. Um, the the riff really kicks in like octaves, kind of like really '90s punk feel, something like Pennywise would have done back in the day. Which I uh, really fucking like. It's really cool, and then it's it, it goes into a little more of uh, again kind of a maiden esque uh, like. 80s speed metal vibe it's also got this like anthem-esque feel where like yeah. you can really chant along with it it's one of those songs where even like if you've heard it live for like the first time you're kind of able to start singing along with them by the end of the first time you're but, but that's it. what i mean like the the by by when i say maiden-esque like okay. the chorus gets very half time and you the ride like oh, 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 oh you Just know what i mean that, like, like i don't know what you mean when you say that kind of shit <laughs> So I might see. I'm translating five. it. Five on I'm five. I'm translating it. I did not go that far with it. I gave it a four and a half. I gave uh, a lot more fives than Holden did. That's true. I really like this jam, though. I mean, we're talking about near perfect. Um, <laughs> I, what did you not like about it, sir? Honestly, it took a quick minute to really start. Like, okay. I, and it's not bad. It was artistic. I I kind of appreciate where they were going with it. And then once the first 30 seconds of the track comes through and those riffs kick in, it's like, yeah. But the very beginning is a little slow and thematic. And, and, you know, it kind of goes and it goes and it goes. And otherwise, it's great, yeah. But I guess you could just say it's the sordid soliloquy of Sawborg Destructo. Yeah, that, that we could do. do We got uh, our first track with like one of the other characters, Saborg uh, Destructo, and he is, I guess, not an instrument playing member of Guar. I Just, might be can, wrong. Can we have a moment? His name is Saborg Destructo. And as we discover, he was made by some other villain that they fought in in the point, and he's like fused together, all Frankenstein-like, and he's part cyborg, whatever. Because so, sci-fi. And like, you can almost get the feeling that this song is like where he comes to life at the beginning and you're hearing mm-hmm. his backstory. And he, he's like, he, he comes to terms with what he is. Is he alive? Is he dead? Etc. And then he gets programmed with one mission. You must kill Guar. And, and the opening he, feels very much like this evil thing coming to life. Like you can hear it in the music. It's this like yeah. uh, almost, almost pinch harmonic style, like really speed picking. Um, and then... Yeah, like the rest of the song is just this really fist pumping stop start. It feels very cyborgy. And then uh, what I thought was really cool is as much as he's he's got his one track mission of killing War, as the song even gets farther along, he gets a little more almost awareness to his character where he realizes that he had this twisted creator and he wants to kill this fucker, but he's not been around. According to what I read online briefly this morning, dude who played the character hasn't been around since 2002, so it's like he really just, the character hasn't been used in ages, so whatever. And I feel like this was just bringing up the villain that they normally would face, I guess, and and I guess because in this album, the villain is everybody, right? There isn't really this main person, and so this guy was just giving his backstory. It was fun. He's there. Now he's still determined to kill Guar. That's what he's doing in the meantime. Must just to let you know, Guar. he's still out there. We're not done with him. That's kind of... Keep in mind, I'm mad ignorant, but if as a fresh listener, that's what I got from the, the point of this track and its placement on this album and where it is. I dug it. I gave it a four. It isn't definitely not on the my favorites on the album, but it, it didn't feel like filler so much as it felt like like a side scene, like a little intermission of the album a little bit to just give you something else to that this to me would be like the intermission. I'm uh I'm being a little lighter on the grading for this one for a lot of reasons. Just because I look, I'm 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 not impartial. I am a metalhead. I right. love metal. <clears throat> so that's that's automatically adding points. When I see a song title like The Sorted Soliloquy of Sawborg Destructo, like you would have to make a a pretty bad song for me to not give that a perfect grade just that title is fucking amazing i do like the um, title and I, i'm saying i'm being impartial like i'm giving this a five i but really like the song note, 
so sorry, just because of the, the language, something across the board is they use top grade English in the midst of their ridiculous songwriting. Like Absolutely. It's, like it's 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 top notch writing. Uh like everything connects it and it doesn't feel like it's trying to be too smart because it's not. Like this is this is written by by metalheads, right? Like this is written by your everyman. Well, but I, it's like it's the smart everyman. Like and But it's like it's got a lot of ten dollar words is all I'm trying to say. Like I would say it is written by a guy who who reads books. Yes. Not not your average person who no longer it's it's does. intelligent stupid music. Yes, How about that. Yes, I will give you that. Intelligent stupid music is a great way to describe it. Still, this track is fun. Um, it does feel a bit different than the rest of the album, which is good because it is nice to have that transition. Having the new vocalists come in and play their character is a little refreshing, and it's yeah. kind of like it's cool to see to see that evolution. To know that Guar, it's, it gives you that collective feeling, like. It really is just so much bigger. Like it makes you curious. Like you want to go back and learn more about this guy. At the same time, I, I I don't know. I like it. Yeah, it's like coming in on like the eighth or ninth, tenth season of a show and like loving that season and wanting to know what happened. Yeah, and this is almost on. like that like throwback. Like, hey, this character still exists episode because we have that contractual season obligation to put him in this many per seasons. Yeah, anyway. exactly. Uh, and then there's death to Dickie Duncan. Oh boy. First of all, it has to be said, MC Chris is the shit, and you know that he is. That that that's that's okay. If you know who MC Chris is, that will make sense <laughs> to you. I'm sitting that's here like, yeah, he's, he's shit. MC Chris is dope. Anyway, I wasn't expecting that. It was, he's not like credited or anything. He just appears on the fucking song, and um, he plays the role of this arbitrary character, Dickie Duncan, who is the mascot of a fast food chain, poisoning the children, making them fat, etc. And so we get the very clear message of this song that they're, they're, they directly market the kids. They go out of their way to make your children whatever, and they're poisoning them and whatnot. And that the way the fast food industry operates is fucking evil, and etc., etc. And it's, it's blatant, it's direct, and... Honestly, I think this might be my favorite song on the album we've heard so far because <laughs> it's it's also got the right kind of feel. Like it's it's got that jingle esque feel. Like it starts off and you're almost hearing a commercial yeah. that's being really like heavily satirical of regular commercials of this saying, Why do they sound so fun and shit? They're selling poison. Your kids hear this shit on the radio. You know? It's also it's 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 a little more melodic than like it's still really heavy. And it's and it's it's really anthemic, but it's it's a little more melodic than a lot of what we heard, uh, particularly vocally. Especially because, well, you have MC Chris doing kind of like this chanty rap verses. I mean, the guy's a rapper, so he's obviously not the best singer. And he comes in and he just and he's got this he's got this distinct high pitched voice, so it weirdly worked as this character. And he just directly is saying shit like, "I'm gonna make your kids fat. Come down. I'll give you a delicious treat at two in the morning when you're hungry." And it, and it fits so well. And then. Hearing our Viking friend come back in and counterbalance him is really a great experience. It's like, I wish more, this would happen more often across the board. I want to see more of this, 100%. I think that rap and metal are good buddies and should link up like this more often. And especially the way it fits into the idea of the hang general on, decay of humanity. In 2017, you heard it from Holden to say that rap and metal should hook up more. Yeah, buddy. Bring back that new metal. Oh shit! You hashtag don't bring back that new metal. I think it's coming. It's coming. Saying. It's coming back. It's back. It's ha here. Hashtag Hollywood Undead, maybe. No. <laughs> don't. Uh, <laughs> they have a new album. I don't Nick. care. But um. Undead. Anyway, this song. song got a four for me. It's, that's a great album. Uh, right. This song got a four for me too. Uh, I'm sorry. No, to all actually, you got a four and a half. Fans. Actually, what am I sorry for? No one who's watching this video is a fan of Hollywood Undead. I'm a fan of Hollywood Undead. You like war? I like Hollywood Undead. Anyway, um, so I thought this song was a four and a half. I thought, A, the message is on point. It fits the theme of the album. Because as you, we've seen, it's the general destruction of humanity is kind of killing itself. And what is the most overt example of legal ways we can kill ourselves you can think of beyond alcohol and cigarettes and that type of shit? It's probably fast food. Yeah. It's poison. It's it's cool. It's just, Instrumentally, I was like, it's it's not quite as interesting as what's come before it. Mm. Like, I'd still give it a four. It's still a good track. I think. It's just, and it, ironically, like, this is one of the shorter tracks. And I just, I didn't find it as interesting. Like I, I think it was a lot to do with MC Chris, right? Because you now you have this extra vocal element. Yeah. And, this, and it, for what, it, he the way it, he bounced off that, that beat is impressive, right? He did it really well. And he has multiple flows he brings to the table. And it had to be done in a way to support 
this style yeah, of thing, fair, right? Yeah, fair enough. It's so, just, it's, but that's where it really gets in line with my love of music. Yeah. Like we're, we're now like jumping right into combining my favorite elements of things together. And so it's not perfect. It's definitely not flawless. Um, but it's a four and a half. It, it's pretty fucking awesome. I plus this one on Spotify. It's the first one I felt like I would easily go back to and listen to again and again. Yeah, you, you got your four for me. Anyway, it's not like you were crushed by a cross. Um, so this this is the Primus Maximus character doing the singing here, which I believe Flash, is one of the potulous, sorry, potulous Maximus. Fuck, don't hate me, internet. Uh, it's a direct attack on uh, religion. Yeah. Super clear, super blatant, super to the point. And again, this one is another one that feels like it could be it could be a tribute like this is right out of slayer's 80s back catalog like you put this m most of the song most of the song you you drop this on seasons in the abyss or south of heaven and it it's right at home it's got that that like and then it like super tom mariah delivered screaming vocals and then Random gospel esque holy people singing bridge in the very middle of the yeah. song. I like Epica or like one of those one of those big gothic metal bands. There, you know, which is pretty cool because I feel like that it, it's a it was a well placed break and then guitar solo we shit you know chorus was very repetitive, very chanty, very proper. I feel like this song was a little more obvious to being what you're describing as like paying homage to something yeah. as it did. I mean, yeah, obviously religion's crushing the world, but even from a thematic point of view, it, it almost feels like an easy win here. Whereas they did something really creative with the fast food industry. And I feel like the follow up was well, a little weak, but that that's what I mean by Cause Slayer's entire thing is making is, is, is banging on Christianity. Right. And they mm -hmm. did it exactly the way slayer does it so i felt like this may have been more of a tribute to slayer than it was a direct attack on religion right right type thing so um, i give it a four it's a fun listen it it's not like a song without substance it, it, it does everything it's supposed to do but almost to its detriment it does everything it's supposed to do uh this one got a four and a half for me uh it's the the the, the gospel singing was was cool uh the operatic not not gospel. I'm sorry. That the operatic like ah, was was cool. Um, I was never a fan of like Nightwish or, or Epica like or Nightwish. any of those bands. Um, I, I I respect what they do. I always found that it was it's some doesn't quite fit there. Like it's a cool combination, but it just and it, and I get the same feeling from this song. But the rest of it is super thrashy. Like it's so thrashy and it's so energetic and it's so mosh ready that you gotta love it. So this one got the four and a half. All right. Um, so fuck this place. I just wanted to say about this track, like, through, through the album there were a couple of intros that I just didn't feel like they could kick my ass more than they had just done with that riff, you know what I mean? And then this riff comes in, and it's just like... Da -da 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 -da. Like, um, it's a bit of an odd comparison, but there's a Converge song called Dark Horse, like one of you knows what I'm talking about. Uh, it's not, it's not an odd, it's not an odd time signature like that riff is, but it's very similar to that riff in, in terms of energy and in terms of execution. I love the two riffs for the same reason. Mm -hmm. And this song evolves in <clears throat> such a like, like it's strong performances all around, like the whole band just brings it on this track. Uh, and you really like, uh, there was kind of an official video for this one, but it was really just the band yeah, it's live, live, whatever. And whatever. And they're, they're fun. You can see how it'd be a great show. But really, it's what the song is kind of about, right? So now we're getting more, again, directly back to uh, the death of their, their previous front man, who's an odor, odor, I can't remember. Odor is That dude. And it's kind of like, at the same time, like being like, look at what you left us here with. Look at this place. They're rising up against us. They're being a bunch of assholes. Everybody fucking sucks. Fuck this place. Like, they're talking about the state of how awful shit is and how they're stuck here. They're stuck with this bullshit and, like, they really don't like it. But it's so hard. But, like, that whole second verse is, like, why did you have to leave us? Why? Why did you do this? Like, and you can feel, like, at the same time, they're looking around at the reactions of the people and they're just trying to struggle and, and find their way through this mess on their own while getting such negative reactions and it's it's really like almost like a <laughs> fuck you to everybody while explaining their point of view at the exact same time 
while fitting the album in character while being meta and talking to their fans. I think it's a really fucking like deep and amazingly composed track. And then there's just the amount of different sounds that get used, the different structures they like they they went all in on this. Yeah. Uh, I gave this a five because it is the most impressive thing I've heard so far on this album. Yeah, this is like um I mean, I'm going to make a comparison that you're not going to like because you, we, we just spoke about Kobe and Cabra and you don't like them. That's but fine. this is like on No World for Tomorrow, uh, fucking Grave Diggers and guns, Gunslingers, like the, the part in the, in the album where you know it's getting serious. Like now they're bringing it back to like, this is going to be a big song. Like it's, it's, it's a really cool track. This one got a five on five for me. I mean, it's just, it fits the theme in the sense that it starts off with the war on Guar, which is kind of linked into the same subject. It's got the energy like you've never seen. Like you can see that they're not necessarily like winning this war, right? They don't necessarily feel like they're winning it now, but they're here and they're willing. They're, it's like you can almost feel like them coming to terms with their 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 reality that they are now in, and this is the conclusion to spark their anger. But there there's anger in it, but there's pain in it, and it's. I guess maybe I'm being a bit redundant, but it was just fucking great. That's the, you know what the problem with the good songs are? You kind of just get so excited at how good they fucking are that you have a lot more trouble going on about them. Anyway. It's always more interesting to sit to shit on shit than it is to compliment it. Or, like, I don't know. Plus, it's, it's like, thematically really blatant and deep. And what, Anyway, go listen to this album after you're done with this. Phantom if Limb. If you haven't. Yeah, Phantom Limb is next. When it cries like so. Like, you know, sorry. I wish I would say this is the last track. Holy shit, you just, the emotions are real. Yeah, like, you know this song is going to make it into their live set. Like, you know it. This feels just like a tribute to the fallen brother, to the fallen soldier, to the fallen brother in arms. Like, it's, it's it starts off with this really heavy classic, like Judas Priest, Black Sabbath riff. Uh, and then it goes into this like almost country uh, kind of verse where he's just talking about times that they used to kill together and but then together. it's also but but that's like the very beginning and it flips real quick like you're gone now and then like they they, they almost address like the fans with the what line really hit me was like we had a choice in all this yeah like like they want they didn't want this they're they are as miserable about the situation as everyone else's is what they're trying to say with this track and and they're just even questioning within themselves, are we going to be able to keep doing this? Is this the right decision? And you can imagine that just like I'm sure Linkin Park's going to get hit if they continue to make music, that these guys probably took a lot of criticism for continuing, mm -hmm. for trying to find their place. And it was just amazing. It's like, A, they imply that they, this isn't about money or fame or anything. It's just this is who they are. They couldn't be themselves without being guar. So they have to keep going. Even yeah. if people don't like it, and then there's just, just like almost this plea that people will be there with them, that they will. Just, just the pain. It's, like, I swear, this is one. Of, this, this is the best song on the album. This is it's beautiful. It's a really good song. It's definitely, it, it probably like objectively is the best because it's the most different. Uh, it's the most diverse. It's it's <sighs> honest like a motherfucker. And it's not like the rest of the album is fucking spot on. Like this is a really solid album. So to say that this is the best song on the album and. It's not the but last. It, it, it but should. It, let's, it, let's pretend that this that this was the last song. And the <laughs> or last are we not one, doing the next song? We are. But let's okay. just for the sake of argument, this is the perfect closing to this, the Blood of God's album. His blood was spilt. There's this war on Guar over the last few years. What's going to happen? They've documented just their feelings about the way people are and shit. And then at the end, they're like, you know what? We have decided to fight on, even though you're not with us anymore. Even though it's like when we perform, there's this phantom limb. We can feel your presence. You're not there. And just the idea of it, like they feel amputated. They feel like a part of them is missing. And it's just perfectly conveyed. Like, again, it's a very long song, but it delivers. And it's, I swear, I felt misty-eyed when I was done it the first time. I was hit right in the feels. It was... It's, it's good. And the thing is, like, from a, from a comedy, from a satire band, to get you with a power ballad the way this one does... Like, it's it's cool. It's pretty cool. It's the same way that Tenacious D can get you with Fuck Her Gently. You know what I mean? And actually, I felt a lot of the D Maybe. Uh, on, on this record. It's 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 very spiritually in line with what Tenacious D do. I, um, I feel like it was just... 
It made you know what? it really made me excited. Anyway, let's, let's just get through the anyway. I gave this a five. I gave it a five. It's and fucking then perfect. If you want blood, you got it. Yeah, cover. Holden hates ACDC. I'm not a huge fan of ACDC. I'm not. Hatred is not the right word. I am bored when I hear a lot of their music. I apologize to all the super fans out there. It doesn't do it for me. It's it's very like I feel. Anyway, I don't want to go that far into it. So this song, I have very mixed feelings about its placement. Thematically, weirdly enough, ACDC wrote the perfect ending to this album in the sense that after they've gone through and they've made their decision to keep fighting, they slaughter everybody and they they are they assert their power. And it's it honestly is a super fitting song. But coming from that phantom limb experience, it's like, first of all, whatever came next was going to be viewed poorly. Like, it's, it's so hard to follow up something that powerful and then see the next song with any kind of, like, super love. Like, it's it's that that Phantom Limb is a rare thing. And then, like, you get this, which isn't even their song. It's a cover, which I maybe I'm wrong about this, but I feel like Guar is the kind of band that can do the tribute thing. So they don't necessarily needed to have put this cover here. They could have just written their own or in a more perfect world ended the album at track 11 and this wasn't here and it would have been like fucking even better so i feel like this it was kind of boring um it was a three on five for me i didn't i didn't like it that much i get it but i didn't like it i appreciate what they did i mean thematically it makes sense if you are kind of paying homage to some of the some of the metal greats like acdc are the soldiers of rock right like they are they are, for those about to rock, we salute you. They are thunderstruck. They are, like, they've written some of the most undeniably definitive rock and roll riffs uh, of all time. And so to end to end this record with an ACDC DC cover makes sense uh, in terms of rock warriors paying homage to rock warriors. Um, the track itself, it's a deep cut. <laughs> it's not like, it's not, it's not, I mean, deep cut. It's not your most famous ACDC track. I didn't realize it was an ACDC track. I'm sorry, don't hate me. Uh, it makes sense now that I know it is. I, I, you know, I felt a little... The, the Guar does it. They speed it up a little bit. It's not exactly the same. Uh, they do it a little more Motley Crue, a little more... A, li- a little glamier than ACDC would have done it, a little faster. I also feel like it's a weird placement. I don't think it needed to end the album. I think it could have just as easily been a B-side or a separate release. Bonus track. Uh, or a bonus track or what have you. Uh, it feels a little weird after Phantom Limb. It's triumphant. It definitely is triumphant. But it, you know, if they, if they had even done like a, like a more popular uh, anthem, like 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 for those about to rock, uh, might have might have hit a little harder. This but you know, there's not enough blood. There's not enough blood in it. You're right. Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Then something something like that. You know, uh, hell's bells. Something to ring out war. But like. That, that people would know. Or, and again, I'm not saying that you're not going to know. You probably know this song if you're watching it. I don't. I'm sorry. I um, just feel like it's not the kind of album that needed a cover song. No. Um, and it's it feels a little, a little cheap at the end of this experience. Like, they have given me 11 great songs. Honestly, even the ones I wasn't the craziest fan of, 11 great songs. Crazy high-end experience. And then... I feel like if I was on a chart of my pleasure listening to this album, when we get here, it just goes... I mean, look, it's 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 energetic. It's fist-pumping. ACDC boring. fans are going to like it. Like, I, 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 I'm not mad at it. I'm I'm a bigger ACDC mm-hmm. fan than, than my companion over I here. Find, I find them a little um, boring, so it makes sense. Anyway, I'm done. I'm done this, one, this one got a four for me. Because it's it's cool. It, they they do they do it well. It's not a bad cover. Like it's and it's hard to tackle an ACDC vocal line, right? And he does it with with. Does he it makes really it his well. own? He does it's it with like pizzazz. It's, it's technically proficient. Yes. Yeah. So, I I mean, as far as this album goes, though, I really like the album. Yeah. It's that a song good it, album. just just if you come in at the end, that's not how I felt about this album. Um, this wasn't a great experience. I. I feel like I've been converted into a Guar fan now, mm-hmm. and it's just a matter of going back and listening to it to validate the theory. But like, I, again, I don't know if I should go through it like chronologically or if I should cherry pick some. I don't know. I'm gonna have fun listening to it. They have like 12 other albums now for me to fucking check out. I gave this record a 4.67259 I didn't give it that high for me. It was a 4.167. 
So it was pretty good. Y'all can make fun of me with the numbers. I just run an average and copy off a calculator. Fuck, it's not like that complicated. That was fun. I had a but, good time uh, with that. But uh, ultimately, to me, this is like, a, as far as I'm concerned, it's a classic. Like, it's a classic for, like, my nostalgia. Like, when I'm, like, in the future one day and I'm at a Guar show or something, I'm going to remember reviewing this album, th- this moment of just discovering this whole world, this universe of culture. It's like World of Warcraft when you discover they do a, ho- a whole lot more than just the video game. Look, I'm not going to call it a classic because I know Anthony Fantano is not going to like it. That's okay. No, I'm kidding. But, I mean, it's it's a really good... <laughs> He's not... Shout out. Um, <laughs> no, it's if you are a Guar fan or just a metal fan in general, like, yeah. this is a very solid... Uh, I, I don't just recommend it. I, I, I You probably should add it to your collection. It's pretty dope. Uh, it's, it's a really, really... In 2017, to have a classic heavy metal album that sounds this alive and this fresh... Uh, is a rarity. And you know what? If um, you like, if you look at it, like it's not the first one that we might have seen this year, but this might be one of the most mature, polished yeah, but, ones. And that's what I mean. Like this, like po- polished, but with this much much attention to detail and this mm-hmm. this much room for the songs to be the songs. Like it's there's there's no modern tropes. Like there's they're not trying to sound like a 2017 metal band. Uh, and and it's better for it. Like like it really feels the songs were serviced serviced properly, and there's a lot of really really unique really cool moments on this record. True. Um, yeah. So on that note, we thank you so much for watching this bad boy. We we appreciate you. Without you, this is aimless. Feel free to talk to us in the comments and tell us all about the Guar stuff we missed out on, mm-hmm. the mistakes we made, all the other good stuff that you come in. We like those giant paragraphs. They're fun. Hit the like button if you like it. In the Someone words, tell me what Anthony Fantano thought of this record. And, uh, I want to know. Smash that subscribe like the Jake Pollers do. Uh, fuck, I just it's so fun to say that. I know it's stupid. I hate that shit, but it's just fun to say it. Um, but really, we we really appreciate all of you when you do subscribe and to watch this grow is incredible. And the faster hearts we grow, and the hearts. better we can up the quality of this with cooler resources and, and other shit. So 2018 will be a cool year for all of us. Peace and love. Still 2017. Happy Halloween. It's coming, my friends. I'm going as the Riddler.